Welcome everyone, today we're going to be talking about expression trees. This is a follow-up after the video of reflection as the topic sort of stands in the same area of your code acting as the data that you're going to operate on. So if you haven't watched my video on the reflection, I highly recommend you go watch that. I'll leave a link in the description and uh, maybe an annotation somewhere there. If you understand that the code that you write is also data that you can use to do stuff, then you're fine. And also just because your code is data, that means data can be code. Okay. So when you receive data, you can create code. And this is what expression trees are all about. So before we jump in, I just quickly want to explain the tree data structure. So there's a couple of different trees that they are. Primarily, we're going to take a look at a binary tree which is a more common one. So for example, if we have a map expression of something like one plus two, all right, uh, what's gonna happen is before we can add anything, we need to know what we're adding, right? So we add one and two. So we need to know about one and two before we can add. So what we do is we say, right, we want to add, uh, but what do we actually want to add? All right, so we want to add one and we then we want to add two. So the circles are called nodes and nodes can also be represented as classes, objects, etc. Right. So it's some kind of an object that holds some kind of a value of some kind of type. So, for example, here are we have types of integers and the values, you can see them. And at the top here, uh, we actually have an operand. Right. So the type is an operation and the exact value is a plus. Right. And the way you traverse the tree is you say, right, what do we want to do? We want to do plus. Do you have anything on the left? Yes, we have one. Do you have anything on the right? We have two and then we add them together. Okay. So you always traverse from left to right. And this is essentially it to the tree data structure. It can be, it, it basically, if it grows in size. So for example, if we multiply by three, uh, three, the multiplication is done first. So we kind of have to do it in reverse. So we still do the plus first or rather we write it first because it has to come last or after the multiply. Okay. So we do plus and then we say, right, if we want to plus, what do we need to know about? We brackets here to make it a little bit easier. We will need the one. Okay. So we have the plus on the left hand side, we have one on the right hand side, we have the two multiplied by three. So before we can multiply anything, we need to know about two and three. So the next node will be multiply. And then on the left hand side of the multiply, we have two. And then on the right hand side, we have three. Okay, so this is pretty much it. The, this is what expressions are. We can also take a closer look at them in the a link pad example. So for example, if I say var a equals one plus two, so we're going to do exactly the same thing I've just did. So there is no off, but, but primarily I want to go to this tree window. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight one plus two. Okay. And here, if I zoom in real quick, so what you can see is we have the add expression as the top node going to your left. We have a numeric literal, literal expression. And then on the right, we have numeric literal expression again. And, and at the bottom green ones, you can see the value that the object holds. And if you can see a common pattern, it, what we have is a expression appended to the name of numeric literal or an add. So this is essentially the root type of the object. It's called expression. It's an abstract class from which all other classes inherit from. Okay. So again, uh, we'll just build on this example a little bit. We'll multiply it by three, same as we've, uh, sa same as I've drawn it. So uh, the, the whole main function is a little big. So uh, primarily what we're going to be dissecting, dissecting is one plus two multiplied by three. So here you can see we have the add expression on the left. We have the one on the right. We have the multiply expression, multiply expression holds the value of multiply right here. Numeric literal on the left hand side and uh, numeric literal expression three on the right hand side. Okay. So this is pretty much what an expression looks like when you essentially you write some data and then it generates code based on that data. Okay. It just so happens that this data is C sharp syntax, right? So, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, bring a little example to sort of uh, help us uh, jump into the world of uh, expression trees in C sharp. So what we can have is essentially a function which we will say returns an integer. 
and we'll say it, that it return, returns a 5 okay so we'll just trigger the function and we'll get 5 so if we uh, execute 5 and then we'll dump this dump will just output it to the console on the right here so we'll get the number 5 here so all this function does is outputs a 5 what i want to do now is let me just copy this line and i will wrap the func in an expression okay oh. and i will append underscore expression on the end let me put some space here so if you've ever seen this you would have probably seen the, seen this if you've used entity framework core or automapper but essentially what this does is it basically says well we are expecting a function that returns an integer go ahead and store the information about it okay so five expression is not a function it is rather information about a function okay and the primary difference between these two is that for five function what we can have is we can have a method body inside of uh, the function okay with the expression we cannot actually have a method body in which we can return okay so this will give you squiggly lines because the method body consists of statements which do not cannot exactly evaluate into expression trees reliably. So let's go back and le let's just output the five expression and let's see what we get, right? So uh, just for sake of proof, we're going to trigger the function and it's going to give us squiggly lines. We cannot, we cannot execute the method, right? Uh, so what we can do is let's just go ahead and dump the expression. And what we're going to get on the right hand side is essentially all the information about the expression. So here we can see the node type, okay? So as I was uh, drawing these out, the circles, or rather there are no arrows. So these circles, each circle is a node. So in our case, the node, the root node is lambda, since this is the first object. And then the body is a node that is called constant. So node type constant. And so this would be the constant, uh, this would be the lambda, and on the right hand side we would have parameters, okay? So these parameters there are null current, uh, zero currently. So what we can have with parameters, we can have multiple parameters, and then with the body, so uh, this body right here, I kind of didn't write body here, but essentially this body contains this node, right? So it's just a singular expression. So uh this should give you an idea that the, the function that you assign to an expression what this really is is just information about that function or rather that expression or that expression tree so you can traverse the, this expression tree and that you can do stuff like derive from the information of the function that was written so this is some data that you're passing into the expression which you can tra traverse that so this is how entity framework will read the expressions that you write and then based it will check what you have written and based on that it will generate an sql query okay but then what you can also do is use the expression api to create functions so once you have an expression and you actually want to call the function what you can do is you can grab the expression because at the moment it's just data about a function you can go ahead and compile it okay and after we have compiled it, compiled it, we can run it we can see that it's in, indeed a function. So once we compile it, again, it's that function that we defined there. And what we can do is we can actually call it and we will get a five in the end. Okay. If you're not comfortable with the two brackets on each side. What we can do is we can call invoke instead, and that's still going to be a five. Okay. So I don't want to dwell too much on talking about expressions uh, uh, kind of aimlessly. So I've prepared two examples. One, an example is the reading expressions where essentially we're going to provide some expressions and then we're going to try to derive some data from it and then we're going to read some data and create expressions or create functions at runtime okay so let's go ahead to the read expressions and what we have is a user object and uh, then we have a url so what we're essentially saying is you're going to call an API that is going to give you back a user object. And what I want you to do is select some fields on that object. So for example, when we create the URL, we want to select the name and age kind of with like entity framework, how you do the select statement here. What we're doing is we're including field fields in the URL, right? So we're going to, if we add the name, what it's going to do is it's going to add a query parameter of name 
to the URL, right? And then the response of that is going to be a user object with age null and name present, okay? And if we include both, both are gonna be present. So this is sort of the setup. So as you can see here, what we can do is we can type in strings and this is a really easy solution, but if uh, you use strings, what can happen is you can flat out add a property that is not meant to be there and typos can happen all the time, okay? And there is no IntelliSense over your strings, unless maybe, maybe there is grammar checking if uh, you have some plugins in your ID, but generally this is a very mistake prone approach. And unless you're very familiar with the API, you're going to be making these mistakes. So what you can do in this particular situation is you can use the object, right? So you have an object and you already know what properties can be returned. So the data, the information about the properties that can be returned are already on this user object. All we need to do is find a way where we can say, right, grab this user object and then select a property. Okay. And this is precisely what we're going to do. Instead of specifying strings, which we want to select, instead, we're going to specify properties that we want to select, right? In this case, we have name, and age. So what I'm going to do first is uh, not soil this, uh, uh, this example too much. We're just going to go ahead into the example here. I'm going to copy the user object here. And what I will do is I'll just show you my approach, how to essentially extract data, because all, all, all we want to know is what property do we want to request? How do we select a property usually, right? So usually what you would do is you would have a user, so new user, and then you would say username, right? So you, this is how you select the name. You can then dump it. And uh, if you've set the name to be something, you're going to get that output. Okay. So the primary thing that we want to simulate is this. So grabbing a user object and selecting a name and we can, and how do, how do we put this behavior into an expression? So this is what you need to think about. You need to put this behavior into this expression. Okay. So you don't, don't think of this as the function you're going to be executing. Think of this as C sharp syntax that you're going to read as data. So instead of writing this string, you're going to write C sharp syntax, which is going to get checked at compile time. Okay. And it's not actually going to run that code, just using that as data. So what we can do is we can create an expression. And uh, for this expression, what we'll need is we will need a user and we'll need a name. Again, I'm going to repeat this. We will not actually need a value of the user to pass into this function. We're not writing a function. We're writing some C sharp code that is purely there to be read. So we're going to create a function, which is going to accept a parameter of user object, and it's going to return an object, right? So because this is going to be some return type, we don't care if it's a string or an integer. We just want to return something. So once we have this expression, well, let's call it expression. And I will say that we will grab a user and then we will select username. Okay. So this compiles, uh, if we want to select age, we can, if we make a typo, we get compile time checking. We cannot select properties that we haven't, haven't registered on our user object. Right? So we can't make a mistake besides making a typo on the user object itself. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and dump the expression and let's go ahead and take a look at what we can find here. I'll make this just a little bit smaller. So node type Lambda, uh, primarily I'm looking for the name or the age. And all I want to do is end up outputting uh, the age and name string. Okay. So once we, what are we selecting? We're selecting age. So the age will have an on area expression, no type convert. So uh, expression is the base type. And then there's a bunch of classes like an area expression or property expression, which is really a member expression, which is a little bit confusing of what, what, what actual types you can get. Sometimes you can get the name from the note type. Sometimes you can get the name from an area, an area expression. And, uh, this is just a trial and error process at this point. So yeah, so what we're really after is the name of the parameter, right? So we want to get this member and we want to get its name because this is how we're going to derive what string we're going to append to the URL. Okay. So let's go ahead and zoom in on the body. 
And what I want to show you is that at this point, the node type is convert. So it's an unary expression. And if we select the name, it's going to be a different node type. So node type is member access. Okay. The, diff the reason why it's doing is because it needs a, a conversion from integer to object. Okay. But for a string, it's a little bit easier. String is kind of an object. But yeah, essentially, you can see the difference that the body can be any expression. So what will happen is this body is actually an expression, right? Which is returned from the Lambda expression. So Lambda expression is a concrete class and expression is an abstract class from which the Lambda expression derives. And we'll get to using the actual classes and creating them in the creation example. But yeah, so uh, all I'm alluding to is that if we go to the body and then we try to grab the member, we won't be able to because it's not there, right? Member exists on the property expression or member uh, access uh, expression. And if we try to do the same with age, so for example, now we have the node type convert or an area expression. Uh, if we try to select the, the operand where our, uh, what's it called, uh, our um, member lives. So if we try to go to operand, right, we can't because body is an expression. We need to do a type conversion. So because this example is a little bit harder, let's go ahead and run through this first. Or actually, let's, let's do it for the previous one. So let's go ahead and grab the body, put it in a parameter just like that and uh, what we will do is we will say uh, let's start with the name first uh, run this and let me just dump the body again so we can take a look at it while we're working uh, so you can see no type member access so what we can do is do an if and generally how I sort of get a feel for what class to convert the body to if body is property expression this may not work, so I don't get anything. What I will then uh, try to change this to is something like member expression, okay, or member access expression. So then I can use this, and basically then on the member expression, I can zoom in on the member and grab its name, and then dump it, and maybe even to lower it to, what's it called, to fit it with the URL, put a semicolon on the end, and at the end I get a name. Uh, otherwise, uh, if I select the age, uh, I'm not going to end up with an age at the bottom here because the body is a rather an unary expression. So this is, again, if you try to then orientate ba ba based on the node type. So if you say body is convert expression, I'm like, I don't know what convert expression is. So it's like, I, I, I'm not sure why this API is so confusing, but um this this doesn't help but the things that you can do with this end up being quite uh, impressive uh so an array expression uh, ue uh, an array expression and then we can go ahead and zoom in on the operand and uh, again operand uh, if we hover over it it's going to be an expression so again at this point we will need to do another conversion where uh if uh, I'm not going to do too many examples, but essentially here I'm just going to convert it here because I know what it's going to be. And it's going to be member access, which is what was here. So we're going to cast it to member access and then be able to grab the member and then the name and then to lower. So we're going to do the same thing that we did above there and we're going to dump it. Uh, okay. And by the time we run this at the bottom, we're going to have age, right? So the point here, again, I'm going to re reiterate this is that we are not executing the function that we write here this is code as data so we have written code just to use it as a data structure okay and it comes in the form of expression trees which then we can use something like this to check it okay so let's go ahead and hook it hook this up because on here we can uh, sort of do a string a param string array to select the fields uh let's go ahead and replace all of these question marks with field selectors and what we're going to supply is an array of expressions funk users to objects just like that okay so now all we have to do is grab the rest of this function uh let's say put it here uh the expression we will have to put this uh in a loop so we will have to loop through all of these and uh, grab each individual one so var 
uh, list string results. So I'm going to accumulate all the results here. Uh, so this didn't need to be there. So fields equals new list string result. Okay. Let me call on there. So this is where I'm going to ag aggregate my results. Then I'm going to put a for each loop where I'm going to iterate every single selector. So selector uh, in a field. I'm not getting IntelliSense, which is a little bit, what's it called? Uh, uncomfortable, to say the least. Usually I like I like getting my hand hold, but you know, at least I get the red uh, height. So at this point, we can grab the selector. We grab the body. Instead of dumping anything, what we're going to do is clear the spaces a little bit. Yeah, instead of dumping, uh, we are just going to add them to fields. So fields add to lower. And then the same thing here. So I'll copy this. Uh, again, this is not the most correct implementation. This is just a simple example to kind of let you know what can be done. Uh, so we we'll grab all the fields. At this point, we're going to have a list of fields. And then we can do the same sort of thing here and supply the fields again. Uh, so now, instead of giving the strings, what we do is we say that we have a user and on the user, we will select the name. And then uh, again, we can select a user and we can select age. Okay. So at, at this point, we're just selecting properties and this is checked at compile time. So we cannot get typos unless we make it on the object itself, which is a little bit easier to spot during code reviews and stuff like that. Uh, so let's see if the results are identical. So we'll say number one here and number two here. Let's go ahead and run this. It looks like I have not supplied selected fields to this uh, part of the code. So let's go ahead and run this again. And here you can see the URLs that we generate to the API are identical, except one is not error prone. However, there is a bit of complexity that hides behind it. But if you have a large code base with a lot of API, endpoint calls, this might actually save you a lot of trouble. Okay, so this is based, uh, th again, the to kind of summarize this part is we are writing code not to execute it, but rather to read it as information. Okay, and this is, for example, what Automapper and Entity Framework do, or rather use their more like reading expressions rather than creating uh, creating them. So let's jump to the next example. So here we're going to have, we're going to be creating expressions. This can be super useful and hopefully this example will be able to show you why. So uh, let's say you're building an API and you want to let the user filter your, yeah, maybe filter your results or let's rather say order. Okay. So you want to order your results or you want to filter your results. Usually, how do you filter, right? So what you do is you do a dot where close in your link. You put a little, you know, expression looking thing, right? So we're going to filter everything where age is higher than five, right? So usually everything is done with link and C sharp these days. What if you could use, I don't know, a string to construct some kind of expression, which you can then pass into a where clause or a selector, right? So the possibilities are endless here. So here's what we're going to imagine, right? We are going to be passing a value in the query or header or body, which is then going to be used to either select a field or filter it, right? In this case, it's going to be selecting. So what you have is some class where we have a word and a number. And here I am instantiated that instantiating that some class. And if I want to select a field, usually what I have to do is I have to put a, a if statement, right? Am I, am I grabbing a word? If I am, return the word. Am I grabbing a number? If I am, return the number. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to approach this a little bit more dynamically. And uh, let's say, well, let's run this. So if I uh, submit a number, a little bigger, I'll get a number. If I submit a word, I get a word, right? So I want to replicate the same behavior. So we'll stay with the word here. And let's talk about how do you actually create Lambda expressions, right? Or expressions themselves. So Lambda is one type of expressions and then there are multitude of other expressions, right? 
So kind of how you have the type class in reflection to go into the reflection world and start reading information about a specific type and expression what in, in, in the expression world, what you have is the expression class. Okay. So with the expression class, you can, it's a static class where, which has static functions, which most of these functions, what they will do is they will return some kind of expression, go to expression. If you want one, uh, a convert expression, convert checked expression, continue and uh, add expression. So if you want to perform an add operation and add an assign, uh, these are your expressions, which, and this is how you create them. Okay. So. Uh, going back to the simple overview, what I want to do is I kind of want to go over this expression and uh, redraw it in the node notation so we know what we're creating and that will really help you create the expression if you understand how to form the tree structure. Okay, so let's go ahead and comment this out. Uh, we will go to just the expression and we will just dump this. Uh, so uh, if we want to create this expression, this is what we will do. And uh, just to make it a little bit simpler, I will actually grab the name, right? To shorten it a little bit. So at the root, and usually the, the root is the last thing that needs to be invoked, right? The last thing that needs to be actioned on. So it's at the top case, okay? so it's the root. Uh, so going back to the paint, uh, at the root, we have uh, the Lambda. Okay, so this is my L. Uh, so we have the lambda expression. Uh, we have parameters, right? So parameters, uh, this is not a binary tree. These are just some nodes on the lambda object, uh, on, on the lambda node. So here we have parameters and parameters can have a bunch of, uh, a bunch of things. So uh, parameters themselves, they have a list of uh, types. So if we, let's say if we add an integer here, and we add another parameter to the function here. Uh, this list is going to increment with every parameter. So in here, what we have is the user. So we'll say user. Didn't really need to type it out, but yeah. And uh, any other parameter adds a branch to this node. Uh, the next thing is the body. So we have the body. And again, there's not too much to concern yourself here. The body is just another expression. And the primary expression that is going to be holding is the property expression. And the property expression is a node type of member access. So the operation that it performs, kind of like when we have the add operation, right? So when we had a node where we preferred, performed an add or a multiply, these, this operation, I'll just say that it's a dot because that's kind of how we uh, denote it here in the syntax. We put a dot access something. So this that's what I'm saying. I'm going to say it's a dot, right? Uh, what, what's on the left hand side, right? Uh, what's, what's on the right hand side or rather what, what are we selecting? So uh, we are selecting a name. So this will be on your right hand side. Not sure if it's right hand side exactly. This doesn't look like a binary uh, tree. So uh, anyway, I'll just put the name here and the user. You, you understand that this is the user. Okay. So, and then yeah, the, as the tree gets traversed, it's something along the lines of this, always left to right. Uh, so yeah, so now you can uh, see that essentially before, it's kind of like dependency injection we, where you need to know about all of your dependencies before you can bunch them up or before you can fill the container. So before we can construct the Lambda, we need to know about our parameters. Before we can construct the Lambda body, we need to know what the body consists of, right? So what we will do is we start with the bottom nodes and we put it on the higher node and then on the higher node until we end up with a Lambda, okay? So uh, let's uh, go back to the cre uh, creating expression. And what we're after here is this selector, right? So what we're, what we want to do is we want to produce a Lambda that will perform the selection operation of a specific field or property and let us basically grab that value, right? Uh, because that's what the selector is going to do, right? If we put a value in it, it's going to run the selector and it's going to give us back a value. It's kind of like just having a function that will, uh, that has a dynamic selector based on another parameter. 
nevertheless how, how do we do this so before we can uh, basically access the name on the user we need to know about the user so we need a parameter right so we need the left hand side first before we do the right hand side so uh, parameter first let's go ahead and create a parameter right uh we're gonna create a parameter it needs a type what type do we deal with some class right so type of some class uh, some class parameter let's just call it parameter i feel like that is just going to be simpler so yeah it's a hole if you again if you imagine like i'm not sure why i'm saying again but if you imagine this box where you can put the circle bits the square bits where we have a, a function is like a thing with no holes and then as soon as we create a parameter we're opening up a hole that is like uh, some class size so you can only put some class sizes in there right so what we essentially here uh, what we've done here is we've uh, created this bit here so uh, not not specifically the parameter types but the user type we will you will see how we are going to be put when we're creating the lambda you will see how we're going to be essentially populating the lambda's parameters okay so once we have the user, we can then go ahead and access the user's name, right? So we want the accessor. And if we remember correctly, it's called the member access. So let's go ahead and try to find some kind of member accessibility expression, member access, make member access. And uh, not quite that. And uh, rather what we want is property or field okay so uh, creates a member expression that represents accessing or property or field right so uh, you can see how the names don't match up here this is why under and it's important to understand what you're doing being able to uh, speak it because if you can uh, say what you want to do and you don't know how to express it in c sharp it becomes very easy to sort search for this problem in google right so you can then express your question in the search bar and you get a response from a stack overflow or whatever. So naming is hard. Uh, it's a pardonable uh, mistake for creators of C Sharp, right? So that's okay. Property or field is still pretty explainable. If you use it a lot, you're going to remember it. So property or field, uh, what do we have here? Let's go ahead and F12 on this if it's going to let me. Okay. Uh, so here we have expression and string uh, the expression is what are we selecting it on and then uh, the string is property or field so the parameter that we're trying to select it from and what are we selecting well this is the interesting part we can just go ahead and say select this property okay and at this point what we have is this part so uh, now at the uh, we we don't necessarily need to create the parameter and body blocks they li not blocks sorry uh, nodes they live on the lambda node or are kind of part of the lambda class kind of like when i was showing you the tree the numbers or the actual values belonged to the expression kind of thing uh right so let's call this accessor next thing we want is the lambda right so lambda equals expression lambda and uh, this one can be tricky there's a lot of things here uh, so next yeah so you can see there are a lot of overloads again you will kind of need to understand uh, well, google your way around maybe sometimes so here on the right if you are using visual studio uh, or anything you, you're, you're going to be able to reach this with f12 by inspecting the implementation or whatever so here you can see the body is where we're param uh, basically supplying the body and the parameters so the, the that's what's going to fill those two nodes uh so yeah let's go ahead and fill those out for the tail call i'm not sure we'll need that so body is accessor uh parameter let's call let's say false here and parameter okay so this is a lambda this is a lambda expression at the end of the day uh, what can we do with lambda expressions well we can compile them what can we do then 
well we can invoke them and we don't have a specific invoke here we get a dynamic invoke where we can then supply our objects here and we can, I, i'm not sure if we can do this here. let me just select the property select property or rather no no that's that was not we the select pro this is the property that we want to select where we want to select it from some class let's grab it from some class uh, let's see if we can uh, dump this uh, i don't think this is the thing no it's not okay uh so yeah dynamic invoke instead then uh there's always a way around so yeah let's see what we get and we get two hello worlds uh if we swap these around we then select the numbers okay so here you can see the the solution hard coded not scalable um what do we do we are then creating a selector using the expression api and yeah this is a this is data before we compile it you can compile it store the function so this is cacheable uh, there are ways to approach this to make it even faster kind of like one time setup thing so yeah so there is a lot of interesting stuff that you can do with this as you can see a lot of popular frameworks use this and hopefully this video helped you understand the concept remember the code you write is data and data is code okay that's the primary concept that allows you to think of solutions to problems using the reflection and the expression tree apis okay but yeah uh if you did like this video leave a like subscribe if you have any questions make sure to leave them in the comment section I stream on Wednesdays and Sundays, so if you're interested in that, don't forget to join the Discord channel. I do a lot of updates there. And as always, hopefully, I'll see you in my other videos.